Hello. Yes, I can see, but the uh, sound a little bit far seems to be. It's far off right now also. Uh, now is okay. It's okay. All right, great. So we'll begin with today's session. Keep your back and neck straight. Sit comfortably. <clears throat> and when you feel ready, very gently close your eyes. You start connecting with the natural flow of your breathing. Watch each breath as you inhale and as you exhale. Slowly shift your attention to your body. Check your posture. Check your alignment. See if you need to make any adjustment so that you can be in a much better position. Now gently come back to your breathing and consciously begin to deepen the breath. Slow, low, and deep inhalations. Slow, long, and deep exhalations. We will open today's session by chanting Om three times, followed by three shantis. Take a deep breath in for Om. Join your palms together. Begin to drop your palms together. Keep your palms on your eyes. 
very slowly while thinking. I'm looking at the palm, begin to open up the eye, coming back with a big smile. Om Shanti, Namaste to everyone. <clears throat> And today we are going to start with a new topic. And this topic is again very familiar to you guys. I think most of you even, uh, if you like um, have ever practiced pranayama in your life, you would have gone for this practice also. Right? So the name of the practice we are going to cover today is Kapal Bhati. K-A-P-A-L Kapal Bhati. B H A T I Kapal Bhati. And in modern times, this is a pranayam. But if you actually go back to the Hatyubhik texts, you will see this thing that this practice is actually a practice of cleansing. <clears throat> right? So, when uh, before the pranayam, basically, you know, the cleansing is done before the pranayam. So as per modern yogis and gurus, they have included this in the practice of pranayam. But if you follow the traditional approach, you will see this thing that this is actually a practice of cleansing or shat karma. Shat karma, you, uh, in your pre-recorded videos also, if you will see, you have certain practices. So you have the practice of jal neti, right? Where you pour the water uh, like you get a special kind of pot and uh, place that, uh, like adjust that pot to do one of your nostrils and then you tilt your head and you let the water move out of the other nostril, right? So, um, like Jal Neti, even Kapal Bhati is a cleansing practice and hence it needs to be done before the Pranayama practices so that Again, everything is clear, right? So the road is clear so that you can do the pranayam practices. So this term Kapal Bhati, you can divide it into two. So where you have written Kapal Bhati, just make a line in between. After the term Kapal, K-A-P-A-L, you can just divide that. And the second word in this is Bhati. Kapal plus Bhati, right? So, in order to understand the practice more uh, deeply, we will first start with the name itself. Kapal uh, means the forehead, this region, right? This is the Kapal, right? And Bhati, uh, this means your uh, light splendor, or uh, you can also, some people they say, Bhati means knowledge, right? So when you do Kapal Bhati, basically, there is the cleansing of this region, which leads to knowledge, which leads to light, right? Because you are cleaning this area, right? Which leads to knowledge, right? So right now, this area is not cleansed. So there are a lot of things uh, that uh, the practitioner may be for some reason or the other, there is no understanding, right? So, in a spiritual sense, the knowledge is being talked of, right? When we use the term bhati. And if you look at it from the point of view of the shakkarma, so it is cleaning the mucus, right? When you do kapal bhati, there is so much force that is applied during this practice that by default, there is cleansing of the lungs and even the nostril region, right? If, the, if you have cold, you will understand this thing. When you do Kapal Bhati, all the mucus it moves out, right? So it is a cleansing practice again. So uh, you can see, look at it from any point of view. At the end of the day, it's just preparing you for the pranayam practices, right? So again, Kapal Bhati is done in a sitting posture. The best posture to do Kapal Bhati is sitting posture only. Um, I will just demonstrate the practice and then I will give you some uh, tips because a lot of people, they again, because Kapal Bhati is very easily seen and uh, it's easy to mimic 
in the practice most of the people they mimic the practice and they miss out on the uh, points which are very very necessary when one practices kapal bhati right so first i will give you a demonstration proper demonstration of the practice <coughs> so for kapal bhati you sit with a straight back and neck so i am just choosing a normal cross leg position you can go ahead and adopt the lotus pose also in fact that is a very good pose for this practice because the body gets locked and okay bhati means shining it, yes shining knowledge splendor them multiple meanings of bhati uh shining is one of them thank you for uh, pointing that out so <clears throat> yeah so i was demonstrating the practice to you so kapal bhati uh, when you do it you have to make sure your body remains stable and the nature of the practice is such that it will you know give you good reason to move okay so you have to make sure you keep the body stable now some people because they have good stability in their body they just choose to choose to sit normally okay for them it is not problematic but for a beginner maintaining the stability can become a little bit problematic so some things that you can do to tackle that one thing i already told you you can sit in the lotus pose right so that will lock your body so the movement that will reduce second thing that you can do you are choosing to sit normally you can place your hands palms facing downwards on the knees like this okay and then you can shift the body weight forward right so when i place my hands like on my knees and i shift the body weight forward a little bit not too much just a little bit i am Uh, uh placing the weight forward so i am making sure that my lower back remains straight okay when uh, kapal bhati is a practice which will have immediate impact on your abdomen and the next immediate impact will come on the lower back right so most people when they practice kapal bhati after that they uh experience lower back pain means they are not done the practice properly okay so you have to make sure that your lower back remains straight right <clears throat> okay so then this is the way in which you can do it right so all of my weight is placed on the knees now and i am tilting my body a little bit forward i will look straight okay and then you begin the practice so the practice of kapal bhati you can write it down normally when we inhale the inhalation is passive uh, sorry active and the exhalation is passive in nature but when we do kapal bhati we reverse the process right now my exhalation will become active and my uh, inhalation will become passive how do i achieve this thing i achieve this thing with the help of my abdomen right when i exhale i push my abdomen in i squeeze my abdomen in and because it is done with force the exhalation becomes active and then i just allow the abdomen to expand back i am putting in no effort as a result and consequence of pulling the abdomen in with so much force the uh, relaxation of the abdomen is quite normal and hence my uh, inhalation becomes passive in nature okay so <coughs> i will just demonstrate the practice to you there are three different phases in which you can do this practice okay so if you will see any advanced level practitioner you will notice this thing that they are doing the practice very very fast okay so that is advanced level practice so what most people do in order to mimic the practice of kapal bhati they start doing that practice in this way very fast and they miss out on the main point which is the contraction of the abdomen when you do the active exhalation okay so 
my goal should be that my navel should get as close to my spine as possible but when you see somebody who is doing kapal bharti advanced level practitioner and you try to copy you miss out on this thing you merely copy the pace at which they are doing and you miss out on the movement that they are making or the correct kind of movement so even you will you know contract the abdomen but the con- contraction will not be at the level at it at which it should be right so you will miss the essence of the practice okay so i would say for a beginner it is okay to start with the slowest pace and then as you you know uh, develop your practice you can move to a medium pace and then when you strengthen the this level of practice then you move to the more advanced stage which is the uh, fast exhalation okay so i will just demonstrate uh, the very slow pace and then i will also demonstrate the fast pace to you so that you become aware what i am talking about and you can choose your own pace so there is no hurry right uh, when it comes to pranayam there is no hurry so you can take your time to develop your practice all right so just sitting normally so i like to go for a few breaths before we begin so this was i would say slow pace you can go slower also right so you can have more gap between both your strokes also so suppose so it is again becoming a little bit more slow so you can decide your own pace the beginning pace right and then as you practice 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 you develop your practice and finally you move to this stage where you are ready for the advanced practice so advanced practice is quite fast okay Okay, so this was fast paced. So last breath, we go for the last exhalation. Round of twenty. So the last in my last session also, I was expelling out <coughs> all of the air that was present in my system, and then. and you allow the body to be at it uh, like allow the body if it doesn't want to breathe it doesn't need it it wants to breathe uh, be that is such which it wants you to be so there is no set breathing pattern after the practice of kapal bharti some people when to automatic retention that is also completely fine and if they want to breathe that is also okay right there is no restriction on this thing from your first stroke till your last stroke your pressure should be equal okay these are things that you will be more aware of when you are doing kapal bharti than anybody observing right so each and every stroke should be done with the same amount of pressure first thing okay then this pressure should be set from the first time that i'm doing it till the last time it remains consistent you know go for the fast form of kapal bharti in the beginning they will start with a lot of like good strokes and by they will lose their breath and they, their practice will completely go down right and they will 
So the some the voice sometimes uniformity in the breath should visible. Some the voice should be visible. Can you repeat? Sorry, you muted yourself. Yes. Uh, sometimes uh, voice is breaking, so sometimes I can't catch the full sentence. Okay. 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 Let me. Okay, <clears throat> I have gotten this closer also, so let's hope it doesn't happen. Let me know if it happens again. I think it's because of the connection. There's a connection, a connectivity problem. Oh, I am connected to the right Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, is, how is no. it now? Is it breaking? Yes, but it's okay. We can hear you and also see you. Okay, so I'll just switch off my camera for a bit. Maybe the voice will improve. How is the voice now? Now it's okay, but um, I hope when you say the long sentence, we will understand. Okay, I will just uh, recap a little bit, okay? So I was saying this thing that when you do Kapal Bhati, a lot of people who go for faster strokes, what happens at that time is the first few strokes are very good. And by the end, the strokes lose their, you know, uh, strength, right? Because they are going at such a fast pace and their body is not supporting this thing. So when you do Kapal Bhati, you can do this thing, right? You can do this thing where you are slowing down your pace. And like I said, you can start with a slower pace. Your main goal should be from the beginning till the end. The strokes remain the same. The pressure should remain the same. The, uh, you know, frequency or the gap between two strokes that should also remain the same when you are doing kapal bhati so you have to be careful of this thing this is a very common error that most people make now another like other few points which you should be aware of when it comes to kapal bhati your lower back should be straight throughout if it isn't you will develop a lower back pain okay so either go for the other posture that I have told you or lock your body, you can go for Padmasan, but any which way you have to ensure that the lower back remains straight. <coughs> A lot of people when they do Kapal Bhati, what they do is they, um, their face, it becomes very, irritated, agitated because they are applying so much pressure in the abdomen, right? Or their shoulders move, right? So this is again incorrect. The main pressure of the air movement, it is coming from the abdomen. So the face plays no role. So any kind of stress, tension, or some people, you know, they exert extra pressure from the nose so that the exhalation takes place. So this is again not correct. The force is again, I'm repeating, coming from your abdomen and that is enough to make sure that the air moves out of the body. So any kind of face facial changes or movement in the shoulders, that is incorrect. So these are things that you can use because a lot of students you will teach, they will make these errors again and again. So these are points and tips for you as teachers, right? What you have to take care of or keep an eye out for. And if you are also doing this thing, then start to work on these things in your personal practice. Now, Kapal Bhati, as you see, it is an intense practice. So it is where, and it is involving the abdominal muscles. So it is very essential that there is a gap of three to four hours between between a meal and the practice of Kapal Bhati. Best way is to practice empty stomach, but just in case you are going for an evening practice, 
just make sure that three to four hours gap is there. Never practice Kapal Bhati at night, okay? Because Kapal Bhati has the tendency to, uh, you know, wake you up, okay? It removes that laziness and dizziness, okay? At any point of time, if you or any of your students, they will feel uncomfortable or dizzy, ask them to completely suspend the practice and do deep breathing so that they are able to come to a, come back to a normal state. Uh, let's look at some contraindications and then we will look at some benefits and then we will practice. I hope my voice is not breaking. I mean, it's clear you are able to get everything. Yes, yes, now it's good. Oh, great, great, great. So, uh, contraindications. Contra when it comes to the um, contraindications for Kapal Bhati, uh, first thing, any kind of heart patient, they have to avoid this practice. High blood pressure, again, avoid this practice. In case of vertigo, avoid. Stroke, avoid. Okay. <coughs> In case of hernia, again avoid. It is applying too much pressure. Okay. And even in the case of gastric ulcer, you have to not perform kapal bhati. So now onwards, there are a lot of contraindications that I will be sharing. So just make sure you have all of them because a lot of your students who will come and learn from you, they will have some difficulty or the other. So you should know pranayam practices like, you know, some asan practices, they are not for everybody. So you have to be careful what you are introducing to them. Uh, can you repeat please uh, the third one and the sixth one after higher blood pressure? Yes, yes, yes. Vertigo, vertigo. Um, uh. And then, uh, pep, uh, sorry, gastric ulcers. When you have gastric ulcers, uh, you should not do kapal bhati. Thank you. Okay. okay. So just be careful if somebody is coming in with these issues. During menstruation goes without saying, this practice should not be done because at that point of time, it is the lower abdominal region, you know, that uh, area is uh, already under a lot of stress. So if you go ahead to Kapal Bhati, you will increase your pain, okay? Uh, let's look at the benefits of Kapal Bhati. Kapal Bhati again has multiple benefits. Uh, it is a great cleansing practice, as I said in the beginning. So your lungs, your uh, the mucus in the sinuses, it gets cleansed very quickly and easily when you do Kapal Bhati. When you do this practice again, the body heat also goes up. So some practices of some practices they will reduce the heat of the body, and some of them will increase. So Kapalbhati is a practice which increases the heat uh, or the temperature of the body. So if you are right now at a current temperature, then you do Kapalbhati. Then at the end you will feel that the body temperature has risen. Because you uh, exert so much pressure from your abdomen, the abdominal muscles gets, uh, get toned. Uh, your, um, all the digestive organs, they get stimulated. All abdominal organs are getting stimulated. Digestion becomes much, much better when one practices Kapal Bhati. And uh, I told you, even forehead region, that cleansing is taking place. Uh, then your entire circulation, everything, it is having an impact on your nervous system as well. Right? It, the nervous system, it gets more, like, active. And Kapal Bhati is a great practice if you feel very sleepy, if you, uh, you know... Uh, 
tend to be very mentally dull. So anybody around you, if you feel they are very mentally dull, you can make them practice Kapal Bhati. Uh, they will be ready for more work. They will feel more energized and they will also at the same time, uh, you know, uh, be able to fight, fight the sleepiness. So some people by default or by no apparent cause, their mind remains very dull. And it's okay. All they have to do is get more active. So Kapal Bharti provides that kind of activeness. So in breathing, this is what they can do. Uh, apart from this, there are, of course, a lot of other benefits also, but these benefits are enough. Right? If, when you take classes, even these many benefits, it will be very hard to speak all of them. And it is always good to add benefits when you give instructions to someone you are teaching. It gives them the motivation to continue their practice. So benefits should always be one thing. It should be on your tips, basically. So if there are any questions, doubts, queries, please let me know. Okay. All right. So no questions? Okay. So guys, I will not, not tell you what pace to choose. Check yourself today what pace suits you best. And I would say start with the slowest pace just to see. If you are good at it, then you can increase your pace. So we are going to practice Kapal Bhati. So you can keep your books, notebooks aside and wherever you are, you can sit comfortably. Keep your back and neck straight. And then just close your eyes. <coughs> Begin to connect with your breathing. Go for the natural flow of the breathing. Don't change the pattern of your breath. Slowly shift your attention to your body. Be stable and comfortable in whatever chose you have, uh, whatever pose you have chosen. Gently come back to your breathing and slowly elongate the breath. <coughs> Prepare yourself for the first practice for today, which is abdominal breathing. You can choose to keep one hand on your abdomen. Or you can just relax your hands. As you inhale, feel your abdomen rise and expand. As you exhale, contract your abdomen. Allow all the air to move out of your system.
continue this cycle. When you inhale, your abdomen should move up. When you exhale, your abdomen should move in. Keep deepening your breath. After your next round, completely suspend your practice. Come back to the natural breathing. And just observe the change that has come up after the practice of abdominal breathing. We're going to directly practice Kapalbhati. So if you feel the need, you can place your palms on your knees and shift your body weight forward. We are going to take three breaths total. So two breaths we are going to complete normally and then on the third breath, after the inhalation, we begin with the practice of Kapalbhati with the exhalation. Just ensure your lower back is straight. And now just follow my instructions. Take a deep inhalation. Exhale deeply. Inhale deeply. Exhale deeply. Inhale deeply. And begin the practice of Kapalbhati going for 20 rounds. On the last exhalation, exhale out the breath fully. You can release your hands, shift your body weight back in the center. Just allow your body to breathe as it wants to breathe. You can keep your focus on your abdomen or on the area between both your eyebrows. Just feel the impact of Kapal Bhati. We are going to go for two more rounds. Keep your back and neck straight. Again, if you feel the need, you can form the required, uh, like of the required position. You can place your palms on your knees and shift your body weight forward. 
We are going to go for the three breaths. Take a deep inhalation. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And now begin the practice of Kapalbhati. This time going for 25 strokes. <coughs> And then our last breath, exhale fully. And then just allow the breathing to flow. You can relax your hands and move your body weight back to the center. See the changes that have come in after your practice. If you feel uncomfortable or dizzy at any time, completely suspend your practice and go for deep breathing. <coughs> we are going to get ready for one last round. If you're back in next street, We are going to begin with the three breaths. Take a deep inhalation. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And with the exhalation, begin Kapal Bhati. Go for anywhere between 25-30 rounds. If it's not comfortable for you, just go for 25 or 20 rounds. And the last step, exhale out all the air from your body. And then just check if your body wants to breathe, let it breathe. Don't change the pace, don't change the rhythm. Keep your back in next trip. <coughs> if 
we will close today's session by chanting om one time followed by three shantis first take one deep breath take a deep inhalation and exhale out all the air inhale deeply om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Feel the vibration. Join hands together and gently bow down. Begin to rub your palms together. Put your palms on your eyes. <coughs> We will do this two more times. Rub your palms together. Keep them on the eyes. Last time, rub the palms together. Keep them on your eyes. Very slowly, while blinking and looking at the palms, begin to open up your eyes. Come back with a big smile on your face. Om Shanti. Namaste to everyone. Any difficulties, any doubts, any uh, anything you guys want to share? Any difference in your practice? If you had practiced before. Uh, um, for beginners, what is the maximum quantity of doing kapalabhati? So, twenty uh, rounds is good enough for them because they are not used to exercising their muscles so much, right? So, for you guys also, like we started with around twenty, and then I increase. Practitioners oh. will easily get used to it, so you can increase the number with the consecutive round. But uh, for uh, first round, you can keep anywhere between fifteen to twenty rounds. That is sufficient practice for them. Their abdomen, right? Maybe right now we are old practitioners, so we don't feel that much, or we are already working so much on strengthening the core, so it doesn't uh, feel too much. But if you make a beginner practice kapal bharati only, right? They will feel the pressure on the abdomen. So not too many rounds, and you can. eventually take them up to 200 rounds uh sorry there was uh, some maybe internet disturbance i don't know from whose side but um so they can start from 15 20 rounds right and then how we did three times um they can also do three times so even more what is the maximum so in one yes 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 so in one cycle they can go for 15 to 20 rounds mm -hmm. and you keep them practice more than one cycle so like we practice three cycles so once you see your students are developing more and more you can go ahead and uh, you can introduce more cycles like today we have done and in those cycles you can also increase the number like we started with 20 then we went till 25 and then i told you if you can you you go till 30 or else you can also reduce the number 
go to 20 also anywhere between 20 to 30 so you can set a range for them like this and um, you can go up till 100 rounds like this right for uh, as you uh, advance the practices so anywhere between 20 15 to 20 rounds in one cycle is enough for a beginner Okay, you mean one hundred rounds in total from uh, one circle twenty, the second circle twenty five. So um, maximum total. If we do every time twenty five, it's about four circles, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. See, cycles. I just uh, wanted you to practice practice more because we have only one class of Kapal Bhati. That is why I introduced more round. Like um, in each cycle, I increased the rounds, but you can go for 15 to 20 rounds and keep that consistent also. And uh, you can take them with practice up to 100, right? So like you are saying 25 into four, this you can do, right? But in the first few classes, just go for, uh, say, 15 strokes and you can go for three rounds. That will be good enough for them, right? Or you can go for 15 strokes and only two cycles. So this is something you will get uh, an understanding of when you take the classes and you see your students. Some students will stop before 15 or before 20. Some students will feel as if you have introduce less number okay but you are taking a group class so you are going for um, a number which can accommodate everybody so beginner is 15 to 20 cycles uh, sorry rounds in one cycle and depending on their capacity you can judge if you want to give them uh, want to make them go for another cycle or not right okay thank you any other questions, queries, doubts? I cannot hear you, Erica. <laughs> no, everything was clear. Thank you. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, guys, uh, there is an announcement. So, tomorrow we are going to have a morning session for pranayam. Okay, so I will post it on the group also. It is uh, eight thirty to nine thirty. Uh, you were having anatomy 8.30 in the morning, right? So tomorrow we are going to have morning pranayam session, 8.30 to 9.30. I will post this on the group also. And uh, uh, tomorrow just the timing has changed a little. From day after, we are going to come back to the normal time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to ask, uh, can children uh, at uh, what age can start practice this? Okay, so Kapal Bhati, Pranayams and Yoga in general should be started at an age when the, uh, you know, um, see there is yoga for an age group below also, but uh, yoga in general should be started by kids when, you know, their, um, uh, you know, uh, hormones and their glands are developed basically so you can say 10 10 to sorry 11 to 12 years about this is when one should actually start these kinds of practices in yoga because uh, surya namaskar then kapal bhati all of these have very specific uh, impact on the endocrine system right so when the proper development and maturity is taking place that is the right time where you can work towards a regulation, proper regulation of these uh, systems, right? Uh, the, sorry, endocrine system, all the glands. Before that, go for lighter practices. Kids can do yoga, but uh, lighter practices are more advisable. Like you can introduce abdominal, actually kids do abdominal breathing only, right? So you can, um, if they are not, First, introduce abdominal breathing, then yogic deep breathing. So, three section breathing, then yogic deep breathing. Maybe even anulom vilom is okay for them, but not uh, uh, like 
hardcore practices right because at that point of time this body is growing developing even the basic things right so after that development has taken place it is better to introduce them to kapal bharti like kapal bharti and surya namaskar mm -hmm. thank you yeah. okay so uh morning class tomorrow i will see you for pranayam only tomorrow first thing in the morning so take care guys and bye bye thank bye -bye. you bye bye thank you bye bye thank you